know, just doing it. It's just doing it. Just doing it. I can tell you're doing it. Jason is uh, absolutely um, proven to me that as hard as I would like to be able to claim the title of the first to the office, I have not been able to unseat Mr. Ditson. He is so um, entrenched in so many processes behind the scenes, guys. Uh, all of you that have the opportunity to work with him know just um, what, it, what it means to this organization to have an individual like this with the experience and the care um, that he has for the agents. So as much as I give you a hard time, Jason, I just want to take a minute and say something nice to you. Well, thank you. I mean, you said some nice nice things about my uh, selection of music each morning when you come yeah. in, I've got it blasting. So you start my day off right. You're on a roll. I, I walked in yesterday and you were rocking Candlebox. And if anybody kind of grew up in the 80s and 90s, you, you've, you've rocked Candlebox a few times. Uh, Today, I don't know. Today was a little bit of a different, little different tune. Um, don't, judge, don't judge me. Don't judge me. <laughs> no judgment, man. Well, let's jump into it, guys. We want to make sure we get plenty of time for our uh, esteemed guest today and also going to have a couple quick announcements and got some exciting news. Jason, do you, do you like to make more money? I love to make more money. I love let's it. Talk, let's talk about how everybody on this call is about to make more money. But let's start with the top 10 new writers coming in at number three, Tony Rafferty, number two, Elda Cabrera, and number one, Rebecca Moore Leach with 11,900 for the month of November. Month ending November, number three, Jao Laguari, David Berry. Oh, here we go again. We're not sure. Is it David? Is it David? Is that a typo or a mispronunciation? Two weeks. No, I'm going to go with El. I don't know. We're going to hear it in the chats. We'll get corrected. We'll get it. And Kaylee Acostas, number one, with over 18000 for the month of November. Top 10 producers, number three, Eric Gurr, number two, Rossum Tugberg, and number one, Timothy Rizimus. You like it? Love we'll it. Take your clap because you know you don't want me to call on you to see if I mis mispronounce. Uh, number three on the no month of November, Derek Fitzgerald. Number two, Wendy Actaner. And number one in California, Sean Hogue. Well done, Sean. Hang on one sec. They're made different in California. Apparently, man. Jeez. I'm trying to move my little screen here so I can actually read all these leaderboards. Top 10 producers and app count. Week to date, number three, Jeremy Whitaker. Number two, Chad Osmond. Number one, there he is again, Mr. Timothy with 18. That's in one week, folks. Makes November sense. for the entire month. Number three, Elliot Freer. Number two, Cameron Henderson. And there she is again, number one, Wendy Actaner. Great job with 46 applications for the month of November. Top Medicare supplements. Let's go with number three, James McRae. Number two, Michael Corrado. And number one, Sarah, you pronounce it. Oh, heck. <laughs> That's uh, this job, baby, it's, fun. it's not as easy as you think it would be. <coughs> My throat's scratchy. <laughs> Hexelheimer is what there I'm going to go. go with. Number three, Julie Buckman for the month. Number two, Joanna Lynn Crane. And number one, Mary Tate. Coming in for the disability income producers, number three, Victoria Shu, number two, Robert Keyes, Anthony Mendocino coming in in first place for the entire month, Brett Diamond, Holly Alien, Allen, and number one, Anissa Shipley. Nicely done. Top five IUL producers for the week, number three, Angelia Arnett, number one, Sherry Gastano. And number one, Jennifer Stanley with $25,000 in production for the entire month. Chad Harrington, $35,000. Will Smith, fifty-seven, dollars And Madison Owenby almost got to that $100,000 APV clip. Jason, you've sold a little bit of insurance in your day, buddy. I have. IUL seem to be kind of on the increase. They're fun. Why is it the opportunity? Why is it? Why should we be checking in and making sure that we're not uh, missing that in the appointment? Yeah, you know what? 
any appointment can turn into a good IUL appointment. And uh, I'll just I'll just say this, right? An IUL can can actually solve a lot of problems and cover a lot of different solution sets, right? Whether it be a tax free retirement, death benefit, right? They kind of go with each other. So if it's set up properly. So average size case when it comes to IULs, as you can see, is quite a bit larger. Said. So. Absolutely. Same to be said with annuity producers, more people interested in making sure they protect what they already have long-term. So many different vehicles out there, guys, to make sure that we're finding the right product solution for our clients. These individuals did that with the annuities. Number three, Phyllis Davis. Number two, Gail Green. Number one, Linda Lee, $750,000. Number three, Shannon Schaefer. Number two, Alicia Hudson. Number one, Brett Loftus. Come on now. Over $2 million in face amounts in annuity production for the month. Great job, Brett. It's awesome. Top free, top, top free. I'm trying to say five and free at the same time, but top five debt-free life producers. Mike Resma. So proud of you all right now, DFL Nation. Coming in number three for the week, Brian Parsons. Number two, Theodore Pritchett, not to be confused with our special guest today, who is a prolific DFL producer himself. And number one, Matthew Self, with almost $50,000 in APV. For the month, number three, Paul Favors. Number two, Jessica Smith. And number one, Derek Fitzgerald with $64,000. Top, top two new writers. Um, looking at a tie there, Jordan Shank and Ben Sipafor there with three. Marshall Whalen with four new writers and the top direct in the new writer category. Ashley and Tyler Harris with six, tied for first. Scott, the main tank, and forever Mr. Danny Young with seven as well. Great job to our new riders. SNAs. Come on, Chuck and Jen Aguilera. Lead the way with two SNAs and 17 agency owners at least had one. Congratulations, top direct SNAs. We have John Ziller and Lisa and Kyle Kimbrell tied for first. Great job to John, Kyle, and Lisa. Season new agents. If you're new to us, guys, what does this mean? A seasoned new agent is somebody that can come here and put up six applications in their first six weeks of joining the organization, strongly giving an indicator that you are on your way to a very successful first 12 months in the business. And this is something that our leaders focus on. If you are new around Symmetry, guys, you're going to hear this over and over and over again. We want to present an opportunity that gives time and money. We want affordable activity, and we want you to be able to win early so that you can invest in yourself and your business and truly create a world of impact. And uh, I don't think you could find a better place to do so. So I'll run through these right quick. Jason, I almost put you on the spot. I won't do that to you. Though. You got this, I support you. Alicia Dela Cruz, Benjamin Grard, Caitlin Munson, Clayton Bratton, Crystal Alleman, Davy R. Jackson, Erica Dunlap, Fernando Tavares, Jessica Smith, Larry Leverett, Logan Carpenter, Madeline Walterman, Margaret Callahan, Pretzel Johnson, Richard Leith, Shane Richards, Tina Morris, Trevor Stank, and Xavier McMeekin. Make sure you're looking out there in the parentheses too, guys. That is the upline mentor that helped make sure that these individuals reach that SNA level. And we certainly want to acknowledge them as well. Looking at the leaderboards for the week, top overall for APV in the key leader category, Brenda Smith, Todd, Jose, and Mark Musifer, number one, nicely job. Recruits, we got Sue, Rita, and Charity Prugar at five. We've got new riders, Jennifer Gaines, Charity Brugar, and Scott Peterson with three. Also tied there with Jennifer. We got Michael and Ryan Newman. Well done, guys. On the monthly side, number three, Hannah Rose Grace. Number two, Alina Cantrell. And Manny 
Manuel coming in first. I see you, Manny. Looking on the recruit side, we've got a tie there with Mark again, Jennifer Gray, and the Edward Puckett. Well done, Edward. New writers, Christopher Hare, Bo Hirschfield. Come on, Bo. And Gabriel and Ike Manello with five. Well done. Also tied with Christopher, Janelle, and Latanya. I see you over there. Coming on the weekly for agency owner. Let's talk about it. Theo Pritchett coming in three. Holly Jacobs, 44,000. Jerry Choate with 46,000. Uh, on the recruit side, we've got my buddy Rob Perley, Jerry Choate, Gabby, and Fred Roethlisberger with five. And on the new writer's side, again, we got a little bit of a tie going. William Berry, Jerry Choate, Gabby, and Fred, Christopher Smith, and Alec Myers takes it with four. On the month side, number three, Mino Glick. Number two, Rob Hurley. Number one, Chad Harrington. For the recruit side, Eric Gurr with 13. Jerry Choate with 17 tied with Gabby and Fred. Got Roethlisberger for 17 as well. And on the new riders, we've got Ronald Williams with seven, Jenny and Chuck with seven, and Gabby and Fred Roethlisberger with 11. I don't think Gabby and Fred are playing around, Jason. What do you think? They don't mess around, in fact. I think they actually are pouring into the right activities to grow their organization. They're leaning into the right things to fill up their calendar. And I like to see these guys out there making an impact and winning. Great job, guys. Agency director side for the weekly, Mark Newbauer. Come on, Mark. David Alvarado. Larry and Ann Griffin with 104. On the recruit side, we've got Ben CP4. Sean Kim, Larry and Ann Griffin with 14. On the new rider side, Larry and Ann Griffin, David Alvarado, and Ben again with seven. Come on, Ben. Love to see it happen. Also tied there with Larry and Ann Griffin and David is my buddies, Roddy and Jessica Jessup. Pretty sure Roddy knew this was going to come up, but uh, he and I have been in a little bit of a battle recently, Jason. We, uh, both of our sons play uh, in a basketball league here in Asheville, and they've had some pretty intense matchups here recently. So I'll save everybody the details. But well, Spivey, hold on now. You you need to tell them who the good luck charm is. I mean, not to draw, <laughs> not to draw attention to myself today, but uh, I feel like there's more to that story. But we'll talk about that. Uh, why do I feel like Mike Resma paid you to? Uh, yeah accessorize in a certain the way. sponsorship going hey, hey brian that got you down buddy I'm feeling, pretty, <laughs> I'm feeling pretty down today really down big time oh my hey, son was today. Today. Uh, for those of you that are new to the call brian williamson we'll hear from him in just a minute too but he is our chief leadership and development officer mike resma um is our chief distribution officer so fortunate for their leadership but in true leadership fashion Brian Williamson comes to town. He's got a calendar slap full of meetings and phone calls and things to knock out while um, visiting from Michigan. He took the time to make sure to show up and come support me and Roddy and our sons playing a basketball game. Highlight of my week, bro. Which my which which my team might have might have won, or I don't know, man. I don't, you know, that's that's not important. It's not important. <laughs> Definitely celebrate uh, that victory because this weekend you are going down. Just for all of you to know, Todd Spivey and I are going head to head in fantasy football playoffs this week, and he will be going down this week. So enjoy that victory because you're not going to enjoy that on Sunday. <laughs> that is uh, that is very optimistic of you, sir. And uh, I would like to humbly <laughs> say that you are favored. You should win by a lot. I'm just hoping to make it competitive. I know that reverse psychology stuff. Come on. Now. Yeah. Come on now. On the monthly side, look at there. Number three, Sarah Reineke, 338,000. Number two, Larry Ann Griffin. And number one, there he is, Dave Alvarado, 384,000. These are our agency directors. Mark Newbauer, 37 recruits. Larry Ann Griffin, 37. Ben CP4 with 40. Come on, Ben. New writers. Roddy and Jessica Jessup, 14, Sarah Reineke, 16, and Sean Kim with 21. That was an excellent job there, buddy. Coming in for the regional agency directors, as we refer to them as simply RAD on the weekly side. The Lion, Frank Brenez, number three, Trey Otterson, Cloutier, number two, 
Eileen Balmer, number one with 197,000 for recruits. There he is, advisory board member, Mr. Andrew Jimenez with nine. The Lion coming in with 11, and Eileen Balmer again takes it with 13 recruits. And on the new rider's side, Trey Alderson Cloutier with six, Beth Maddox with six. Good to see you, Beth. And Eileen Balmer with 10. For the monthly, APV, Ben and Amy Miller, Trey Alderson Cloutier, and Eileen Balmer. Recruits, Beth Maddox, Christopher Menifee, and Frank Brenez with 26. And on the new rider's side, Beth Maddox, Frank Brenez, and Eileen Balmer with 27. MVP time. John Ziller comes in third, number with 104,000. Good to see you over there, Jordan and Christopher as well. I know Jordan just recently had a little celebration there in his hometown. Got to see some pictures from that. Looked like an awesome time. Everybody blessed to be a part. Such a cool organization. Uh, so good to see all of the top uh, producers up here. Going to hear from this individual pretty soon, Mr. Griff Martin, $112,000 for the week. And Mr. Chris Cook with $130,000. And I see you, Chris. Chris called me this morning to give me some coaching tips on that third grade basketball that is life as it appears to be in my world right now. On the recruit side, Griff Martin with eight, John Ziller with nine. That Ziller agency, guys, is doing some pretty freaking awesome things. Chris Cook with 28. New riders, Marlon Faulkner, Ian Graham, and Griff Martin are tied with four. I really like it, man. I hope we're going to talk about this some, too. I'm sure Edward Pritchett will be talking about it some, but what, what I really like to see out of Griff Martin and his entire team is not only did they hit that top contract level, guys, but they kept their foot on the gas and they're actually continuing to grow right through the following weeks, which is always impressive and great to see. Managing vice president on the monthly side, Christopher Clark coming in three, John Ziller again at number two, Chris Cook at number one. Recruits wise, Griff Martin, John Ziller, Chris Cook with 85. And when it comes to new writers, Griff Martin, Christopher Clark, and Chris Cook again takes the cake for 23. Senior Vice Presidents, the Godfather, Tony Capistrano himself, Nate Offert with 126000 and the Spill Dinner Financial Group with $127,000. Great job, everybody in that group. Recruits-wise, George and Janet Matthews, Tony Capistrano, Nate Offert with eleven, and new writers, Nate Offert, Jimmy Spill Dinner Financial Group, and Mike and Sarah Pappas. Tie it at the top with six, very fitting, um, extremely close buddies, and uh, was such cool to see their friendship there um, in the tough season that that was for Jimmy. Much respect, much love for our buddy. Um, senior Vice President on the monthly side, Spilled Inner Financial Group, Tony Capistrano, Nate Offert, number one, recruits Mike and Sarah Pappas, Nate Offert, 43, Tony Capistrano, 51, and new riders, Mike and Sarah Pappas. Mike and Jen Colburn, and Nate Offert, number one with 30. Uh, see you also there tied um, for third place there, Tony. Executive Vice President on the weekly side, Miranda Martin, Sean Shannon, Scott Mank takes first place on the recruits. Darren Stubbs, Sean Shannon, Scott Mank with 18. And new riders, Sean Shannon, Darren Stubbs tied with four. And Scott Mank there takes the cake with seven. Again, well done. Scott, what did we land on, Ditson? What is this called? Turkey leg? Turkey? You know what? It was turkey leg. Yeah, you know, let, let's, go with, let's go with a drumstick. How about that? <laughs> let's go with a drumstick. <laughs> let's shake it up. Uh, monthly side coming in there. Miranda Martin, Sean Shannon, Darren Stubb, Scott Mink takes first place. Uh, Sean Shannon with 30 new recruits. Darren Stubbs etches out with 31. Scott Mink with 63. And on the new rider side, Sean Shannon, Darren Stubbs, and Scott Mink with 21. Well done to all of our executive vice presidents. Associate partners coming in number three, Ashley and Tyler Harris, Ryan and Michelle Miller, 441,000. And Lynn Watkins takes first place with $536,000. For the week, for recruits, coming in number three, Kyle and Lisa Kimbrell, number two, Lynn Watkins, and number one, Ashley and Tyler Harris with 34. They're recruiting 
and they're onboarding and they're getting folks up and riding and profitable guys is on fire so so grateful and awesome to see you guys looking at the new riders great job ashley and tyler harris going to the monthly side ashley and tyler harris ryan and michelle miller lynn watkins for the recruits kyle and lisa cambrell ashley and tyler and lynn watkins takes first and on new riders lynn kyle and lisa and ashley and tyler great job to our associate partners to our senior partners the Smith Agency, $342,000 for the week. My Forever Upline, Mr. Danny Young, $507,000. Looking at for recruits, 16 for the Smith Agency and 42 for Mr. Young. And the new rider, Smith Agency with six and Danny Young with 21. On the month side, you've got the Smith Agency and the Young Agency battling it out neck and neck. Great job, great competition, two wonderful human beings. Um, so great to see a uh, total of 153 recruits for the month for Danny and Danny Young with 74 new riders for the month. Managing partner, Resma, B-dubs, Jason, do you want any other proof of how this organization is exploding? You wanna know if you're, if you're joining at the right time, Yes. Guys, when I started in my corporate position just three years ago, there was one headshot on this next slide. <laughs> the that. entire row has now been filled up. And it's wow. been filled up with tremendous leaders that have had persistency, who have overcome challenge, who, has, who have constantly focused on building themselves into becoming a large enough person that others would want to follow. They have continued to make sure they're staffing up, empower the right leaders in their own organization to find their flight pattern. And we couldn't be more honored to be in business with these individuals. Congratulations to all of our managing partners. Uh, if, I, if my hair was not messed up, I'd say hats off to you. But let's kick it off for number three, Mr. Delaney before in 1000. Today's special guest and speaker coming up soon, Edward Pritchett, with just over a million dollars. And apparently, Marshall Whalen found just that little bit of $5,000 extra dollars in premium to etch out and take number one. Well done, Marshall. Looking at the recruit side, Jacob Pogue, 49, Edward Pritchett, 59, Marshall Whalen with 90. New riders, Jacob Pogue, 22, Edward Pritchett, 31, and Marshall Whalen with 42. For the month, we've got Jacob Pogue, Edward Pritchett with $3.8 million and Marshall Whalen with $4 million. Guys, if you're new, that's right. This is in one single month. This is one single agency. And this is what's possible when you do the right things enough over and over. Recruits, Jacob Pogue with 125, Edward Pritchett 230 and Marshall Whalen 291. And for the new riders, Jacob Pogue with 80, Edward Pritchett with 115 and Marshall Whalen with 144. To the directs division, number three, Carl Miller with 141,000. Ashley and Tyler Harris, 176. Scott Mink takes it with just, I almost tried to do quick math. That'd be 11 bucks. You know what's intimidating, Resma? When you're trying to go over leaderboards and do math, when you graduated from the University of Alabama, Wow. And the national call speaker today graduated from Yale. Oh. <laughs> You're doing great, buddy. Keep it, keep it up, man. Uh, not only that, but you know he was an engineer. So, <laughs> um, public relations over here, in case you were curious. Recruits for Scott Mank, eighteen. Chris Cook, twenty-eight. Jason Pogue, Jacob Pogue. I'm sorry, Jason Pogue would be his brother, but Jacob Pogue with thirty-six. And new riders, Ashley and Tyler, Scott Mink with seven, Ty with Mr. Danny Young with seven. And for the month, Scott Mink, number two, Ashley and Tyler, number one, Jacob Pogue, recruit Scott Mink, Jacob Pogue, Chris Cook. And new riders, Scott Mink, Chris Cook, and Kyle and Lisa Kimbrell. Looking at base shops, looking at the base shop. Number three, Nate Offert, Frank Brenez, 39,000, Ashley and Tyler with 71,000. Recruits, Dave Alvarado, Mark Neubauer tied with six, Joe Martinez with seven, Frank Brenez with eight. 
And coming in, the new riders, Jordan Shank, three, Ben Sipa, four, with three, and number one, Marshall Whalen with four. For the, for the month, David Alvarado, three, Ashley and Tyler Harris with 171,000. Nate offered 199,000. Recruits, hug it with 20. Mark Neubauer, 28. Dave Alvarado with 31. And new riders, we got a tie there. Nate offered Jamie Susie, Frank Brenes, and Edward Pritchett all with eight. Congratulations to all of our leaderboard winners and all of those that are striving to reach that next promotion increase and level up in your leadership. We applaud everybody. So on to the Champions Cup, guys. Special attention. Do not get caught sleeping. As with any contest, when you get towards the end, you would be amazed at what happens when somebody gets a fire lit under their butts. They stop by the grocery store, they get a case of Red Bulls, and in the last two to three weeks of production, come out of nowhere to knock somebody off that top spot. But here in the directs, in the Champions Cup contest, guys, it's not only just about how much production you can do, it's about the quality of production. And I know Resma and Ditson, I know we want to talk a minute about just how important that quality of business is. And let's hit them with a couple of reminders. Yeah, first off, I just I just want to say real, real quick, like uh, for the agents that choose to, to work in December, I've seen over the last 10 years, it's some of the biggest production months of the entire year for some of those agents, because a lot of the competition is taking time off. So obviously, we want you to be able to spend time with your loved ones and enjoy your uh, family time. But just know a lot of the competition is uh, is taking the time off. For, so for those who push, see some of the biggest months of the year in December. Absolutely. I got one for you, Jason. Yeah, what do you got? If I'm an agent and I'm working hard and I'm pushing, trying to win a contest like the Champions Cup, it's going to end at the end of the year. Tell me when would it be okay for me to sign on behalf of a client? Oh, shoot. We're in a digital that. virtual world. I'm I think doing, I've got that on the post it. I'm doing 90% of my sales on the phone and I'm doing it on uh, Zoom. When should I sign for a client? So my post it says never. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, we, and we if the post it says it, that it's, it's fact. Right. So. Definitely. It, it, is, it is never okay to sign on behalf of the client. We always got to make sure that we're following, you know, the e-app and virtual guidelines, which change by carrier, you know, utilizing uh, DocuSign for those carriers or iPipeline and emailing out the signatures. You know, remember that, uh, you know, carriers track IP address and locations and all that stuff. So just always want to make sure that everybody's doing the right thing. We're seeing some things in the industry just as a whole coming out of the pandemic. And just want to remind everybody it's, it's never okay to sign on behalf of the client. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do the right thing always, guys, even in an intense, tight competition towards the end. That one extra application is not worth your license and the many more families that need your protection throughout your career. So let's just make sure that we're all continuing to do the right thing when nobody's looking, B-dubs. I think that might be in a core value somewhere. Yeah, let's get into this leaderboard on Champions Division. Number three, James Satterfield. Number two, Sean Hogue. Number one, Misty Centron. It's getting tight. It's getting closer. It's getting tight. And I think that we're going to have a pretty interesting finish with the flurry. I've talked to several directs that have several agents right there at the top fighting it out these last three weeks are really going to make a difference and when we talk about that quality of business guys again that's part of the contest go to hq you can see all the rules and regulations around this contest but do not miss that fact quality of business getting business placed having the business be sticky and remain on the books is a major factor and just because you might see somebody ahead of you on the leaderboards does not mean that they are going to be the winner. We're going to go back. We're going to audit. and We're going to make sure we're looking at the quality of business. So anybody that is up there within striking distance, just know you're not out of it. If your quality of business is that of which it, which it needs to be. 
So looking over in there in the directs division, Scott Mank, number two, Easy Eddie Pritchett, number one, Jacob Pogue right now in the lead in the directs division. For the overall top base shop and agency owner division, we've got Paige Jensen, number three, number two, Carlton Lear, and number one, James Satterfield. I see you, Carlton, too. I tell you what, on the builder's call, if you were joining us, guys, always fires me up to see Mr. Carlton speak. Tremendous gift. Yeah. Number three, Keith Fonseca. Number two, Ashley Richard in the agency owner category. And again, number one, Misty Centron. Good idea, feedback forum. 1500 Symmetry Nation. Who's got a good idea? Here's the, here's the thing. We know that there's uh, thousands of agents working in our wonderful organization that, you know, is going above and beyond and looking for other ways to optimize, you know, your agency and your business. And we, we want to know if you guys have an idea and something that would absolutely grow Quility and SFG Nation, um, we want you guys to fill out this feedback form. And I want you to be thinking of things like, you know, recruiting and leads and contracting and onboarding, leadership development, sales processes. Whatever it is, whether you've implemented it or you haven't implemented it all already, we definitely want to hear. So everybody right now inside of your HQ, you should have a pop-up notification. If you accidentally hit acknowledge and didn't see it, you can go up to the top right and go to pop-up notifications and look at the historical and you'll see it right there. Click on that form. It's going to ask you four questions. One, if you've implemented it already, what category it falls under. If you've seen any results, if you have implemented it, and uh, also just how you see it growing our, our business. So just bear with us as we go through. We're anticipating a lot of responses. So we've got to go through and um, prioritize them based off of the answers that are on there, but absolutely want to look at each and every one of them to see how we can continue to grow as an organization. And you guys being on the, the front lines of everything, it's very important that we get your feedback. So it's currently going to live in the pop-up notification side, but then it's going to move into the support um, and uh, the support page inside of HQ. So it'll always be there. But for today, um, until we get it up on the support page, it'll be inside your uh, your history details and your pop-up notification. So looking forward to your feedback, everybody. Love it, man. I appreciate that. And it it, it brings me to to recall something, Pete Hubs, if you don't mind jumping in here right quick. Um, sure. Speaking of needing your feedback, guys, QPI surveys are out. There is so much good and awesome um, coaching opportunities and tremendous uh, growth is, is just right there, right underneath the surface. You just need a little help to unlock it. The only way we get there is to make sure we're leaning in which reminds me, I need to finish mine, B-dubs. <laughs> I know you'll be on it, sir. But yes, indeed. Um, everyone should have received an email. Um, the, the subject uh, of the email, just so everybody hears it and knows that it's not spam, is org acuity, org acuity. So, and should say, you know, underneath that, it'll say quality people insights. But if you, if you see an, name, an email in your inbox, org acuity, uh, please go ahead and fill that out. Uh, yes, Obviously, we value the agent journey, the agent experience, and we want to make that better. The leaders that um, are leading the charge as agency owners want to make that experience better. So they need data to do that. We want to make great data-based, data-driven decisions. So yes, please jump on that QPI and let's uh, smash that before the end of the week, if possible. Do it. Yes, and we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Is anybody like potentially like interested in making more money? Thank you no. to the amazing founders, the leadership team, the advisory board, all of the directs, to our chief uh, distribution officer, Mike Resma, to uh, everybody involved, guys, all of our carrier partners. Going live tomorrow. It's awesome. Everybody Everybody's getting a 10% increase in comp. We're going to be starting here at Symmetry as new agents on 80. Then the old 120 will become a 130. Guys, today on HQ, there will be the updated 
uh, information that you will need on which all carriers and which specific products are going to be affected by this increase. You're gonna see products from American Amicable. You're gonna see products from Foresters, from Mutual of Omaha. You're gonna see products from SBLI getting a 10% increase. And I also would like to say thank you to our partners at Americo and to our entire finance team behind the scenes. They came in with some last minute, even a couple of new products that we weren't expecting that you're gonna get an increase on. And so we want to be patient there. But Resma and Bree, if Bree, you're out there, I think Bree was gonna to try to join us for a quick minute and talk through I'm here. of how to, uh, uh, what to expect and when so that everybody can make sure we're on the same page on how this will flow. It is not like a magic switch. All of the work has been going on behind the scenes for many weeks now. So this process we expect to be pretty smooth. But Bree, when we talk about these increases taking place over um, beginning on going live December 15th, what can we expect? Oh yeah, there's been a lot of work going on, um, but we're really excited to be able to uh, be a part of this big change for you guys. Um, our carriers have made grand promises. Uh, so we're really hoping they come through and can make, for the majority of the carriers, make the commission um, change live tomorrow. Um, we do have a couple of stragglers. It depends on the carrier and how they process. Some are able to take the bulk number of agents and flip a switch, and others are having to actually manually key an update for every single agent for 5,000 agents. So um, as you can understand, there's a little bit of staggering that has to occur depending on the carrier. So we just ask for your patience. We're doing everything we can to get everyone exactly on the right level as quickly as we can to stay within this, uh, the 15th, 16th kind of deadline. Um, I do believe uh, Foresters will be the 16th um, and SBLI should have most of you done by tomorrow. AMM should be done tomorrow. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll keep you posted with updates in HQ. There's a few reminders in HQ coming out. Um, we also have a special drop down in our support section that's specifically for commission change uh, questions. So be sure you're tagging that appropriately so it can get to the proper team. Um, but we do ask that you kind of hold back on questions for, you know, maybe till January 15th or so to allow everything to kind of settle down and make sure that everyone's changes go through before flooding us with questions, which we hope doesn't happen. Um, but yes, we are excited. We're here to help. We're here to answer questions. Um, I see some asking about Moon that that is also on track for the 15th if it hasn't happened already. Love it. Love it. I normally don't do this because I know the agent success team behind there that's working the chat. It, it's tough when Brandon and Casey ask 17 questions and ask you to throw something in the chat. But right now, out there, agents, if you would, send Bree and the contracting team a note of your appreciation. If I told you the hours that go in from their team to pull off these type of um, increases and the amount of due diligence is done to make sure that it's all in an equitable as much as possible fashion, and that we're going back and we're making sure that all the hierarchies are gonna be correct. Guys, it is tireless. I mean, it is hours and hours and hours of overtime for, for weeks now. Well over two months has been going into this. And so I know we as agents just truly appreciate you, Bree and Amy Brown, and uh, just don't even get into mentioning names on your team and so many people that have worked overtime on this. So guys, please, as always, we're excited, we're anxious, be patient. Um, we're not 100% in control of this. It's in partnership with our carrier partners. As I stated, America is gonna be closer to that Christmas timeframe, maybe even sooner, but America added a couple of products there at the last minute that you guys are gonna be so excited about. They're gonna see a, a product increase, a, 
a, a commission increase as well. So they'll be a little bit behind the other carriers to no fault of their own. Um, and we just couldn't be more excited about this. So Rasma, anything I missed on, buddy? No, I just want to say thank you to, to Bree and the contracting team. It's a lot of hard work and just appreciate it. So thank you, everybody. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you to our founders. Thank you to everybody that continues to make sure agents are as profitable as possible. Um, things could not be um, heading towards a more productive and profitable 2023. Looking at upcoming events on the Carrier webinar tomorrow, hosted by Efficiency on Quality Level Term, Underwriting Update and EAP Review. The FIF Reset and Advanced Market Training will be next Tuesday, December 20th with uh, Jeff Sigworth and Nate Burks. Make sure you are not missing that. Do not miss this. Everybody, tomorrow, Jason Ditson and Jeremy Miner will be conducting the final episode in our series. And the, the wonderful Alice Newsome. We'll be, we'll be joining us on that call as well. So this is the last of the eight. Right, so this is the one you don't want to miss. Hopefully, you've caught up with. Uh, if you had missed a couple of the previous webinars, hopefully you caught up by rewatching them in HQ. Uh, but this one, we're going to be covering closing. So this is going to be one that we want to make sure that we attend. It too will be recorded. If for some reason you just can't, and it's going to be on HQ. But this is the one to make it to tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern. Boom. Feedback on this thing has been. Crazy. Yeah. Game changer. Continue to innovate. We continue to make sure that we're looking at everything that we do as an organization to make sure that we're meeting the needs of the clients. Guys, this is next level training. See what I did there? Yeah, I did. Symmetry Leader Summit and Spring Fling, guys. Save the date, March 21st through 22nd. Head to HQ for more details. Invitation is only for key leaders. And above, what exactly does that mean? It means how do you receive an invitation? It's for key leaders and above. Anyone who hits key leader qualification at least once between November 22nd and February 2023. It, the qualification to be key leader, just as a quick reminder, is the minimum of 20K net place with four sales agents in your direct organization. Tickets for this event will be 50 bucks. Guys, you do not want to miss this. An opportunity to um, get to meet some truly inspiring leaders, interact a lot with the home office, hear tons about what's going on now, what's coming in the future, and a true opportunity to really grow your skill set and make this a, a key goal of yours in 2023 if you've not qualified yet. We are willing and wide open to having a capacity issue for this event. We want to see as many people there as possible. Um, gonna be a lot of fun while everybody's in town. Last but certainly not least, everybody hold on to your hats. The founders could not be here today, guys. They are in some critical meetings as usual, talking about the future, mapping out a, a, a path going forward that, that truly, truly is going to disrupt one of the oldest industries in, in, in America. And they uh, just never stop innovating. They never seem to stop wanting to find new and crazy ways to make sure that we're incentivizing the right activities. And you're going to see the largest contest in the history of the world. I think there should be an asterisk on that statement. <laughs> Coming in December. And speaking of that, guys, before I Bring on Mr. Edward Pritchett. I just wanted to say real quick, um, uh, I want to say on behalf of uh, the home office, um, Brandon and Casey and Pope, all of the individuals that, that work in each of our departments, let me just say a huge thank you. Um, we continually every year are overwhelmed with the amount of cards, the amount of gifts, the amount of fresh baked goods, the amount of fresh fruit, the amount of amazing bottles of wine, hats, candy. I just can't tell you how much it means to us. It, it, it really does. Um, it's greatly appreciated. You guys continue to 
um, show an outpouring appreciation and love for those that work hard um, behind the scenes here in Swannanoa. And uh, I just want to say thank you on behalf of all of us for all the gifts that continue to pour in um, over the holidays and just know that we we love and appreciate the partnership um, very much. So with that said, I do not want to delay any further. We have a very special um, call lined up. It's going to spend the next 20, 25 minutes, however much time they need to pour into you guys. I think uh, Edward Pritchett's an individual that needs, I wouldn't say no introduction, because he deserves to be introduced in a grand fashion wherever he goes. And it's got nothing to do with the nearly $4 million in production that his agency does on a month in, month out basis. It's got to do with the character of the man, the way in which he leads, the individuals that he surrounds himself, and the way that he continues to give back in his time and in his um, business intellect to help continue to push this company forward to truly do things that others thought might not be possible. So Mr. Pritchett, I want you to know we appreciate you, my friend. I appreciate you coming on the day to pour into us. And most importantly, I appreciate your partnership and how you continue to lead. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Todd. Um, I mean, ev everything that I get to do now is all thanks to what Brandon, Casey, Brian put together 13 years ago and, and the opportunity that we all have. I mean, from those of you there in the home office that support what we're doing here in the field uh, to every agent that's on this call right now um, and just the opportunity that we get to make an impact, right? Like that. that's why Kashan and, and his team were sharing what they were sharing before, why you're doing what you're doing, why, you know, Jason's there, why Brianna's putting in those hours, why uh, Brian Williamson is doing everything he's doing with QPI. It's to allow every single person who this company touches to be meaningfully impacted in their life. Um, and that's, it's so cool that that's, that's what we get to do. Like that's, that's just our, our day to day is like, how can I be more impactful to those around me? And at the end of the day, it all goes back to our clients. You know, that's, that's what we're doing this for in, in these times of quote unquote change. And it's funny, we talk about, we're, we're going to be talking today about everything changes except for the principles. And I know some people are kind of feeling a little angst with all the changes and this, that, and the other, but we act, Todd, like we haven't lived through changes before. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, this is the first time I've ever had change in my life. Uh, like that's the continual state of life um, is that things change. But what this company has been founded on since day one, uh, it's, it's represented in our core values. It's certain principles that allow us to have success and to be able to impart success on others uh, in so many different ways and forms. Um, and that's what I'm, I'm excited to talk with uh, Mr. Martin, Mr. Federico, uh, and Mr. Minor, uh, because they're three gentlemen who I've seen over the years be able to go with the changes because the principles that they hold to are the things that lead to success every time, not some of the times. These are principles, like if you're on this call right now, we're talking about principles that if you hold to these things, and it's why Symmetry codified them years ago um, into our core values, if you do these things, you will be successful. It's not a question of, of if, it's just a matter of when, based off the, the level of effort, the work you put into it, the spirit that you do it with, right? Like it's one thing to do a principle, Todd, and uh, you know, do it begrudgingly, but as you mentioned, you know, all the, 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 the cards and the gifts and the things that are flowing into the home office, like when that's coming from a place of, of abundance and a place of, of love and true appreciation for those that help you do something, you're going to start receiving stuff back because you're doing that. You know, if I'm sending a gift because, well, oh, dang it, I got to send another Christmas card to the home office, you know, like they, you're, you're not going to get anything good from that. You're, you're, you're kind of following the principle, but, but you're not really following the principle. So definitely excited to to share with these gentlemen. Um, I'm not going to, I'm hoping to not speak a lot. I know sometimes I get a little long winded, uh, <laughs> but uh, I really want these guys to be able to share um, what, what they've seen uh, and especially, especially be able to uh, celebrate uh, Mr. Martin breaking out to be a 120. I guess now we're going to start saying 130. Um, so he, he got in right under the gun. So he's like, 
They, him and Jamie are the last two 120s. The last 120. <laughs> no, no more new 120s moving forward. It's, it's, it's going to be 130s. So that, that's something he'll be able to hold on to forever. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, Griff, I have you with me. Mr. Federico, are you there? Mr. Minor? You guys can unveil. All right. Just want to make sure that we have all of you with me. Um, so to everyone, what we really wanted to, to dig into is um, three different aspects of, of the, the principal things that we have to do to build a strong business here. Casey always talks about there's two boxes that we fill. There's a production box and there's a building box. And I'm going to talk with uh, Ryan, the, the Ryans, uh, Mr. Minor, Mr. Federico first. Um, and then I want to come back to, to, to Griff to really talk about for just a few minutes. And I mean, he could talk for an hour about this, but the, the journey that he's had here um, and the principles that have allowed him to find success in the season that he's in. Because I think a lot of times, and you may be in this place, we, we get into this comparison game where we're comparing what we're doing to what everybody else is doing. It's great to look at the leaderboards. It's, it's great to, to, to push for a contest. But the, the ultimate goal that Symmetry was founded on was this deal about bringing balance to the life of an independent insurance agent. And if you're in a place where you're getting the thing that you intended to get, then you're in your right place. And, and let's, let's stop this dissatisfaction because I'm not here on the leaderboard or I'm not winning this contest or this, that, and other. If you're getting what you want, then you're in the right place for the season that you're in. And you're using those principles to continue to get that success. If you're not getting what you want, right? If you're not getting that goal that you have set for yourself, that's where we have to dig in and figure out, okay, which of these principles am I not executing on to get that which I'm going after right now? And that's what I love about this company with the opportunity that we have here is that we really get to get the things that we want as long as we do those principles and hold true to them over the long term. It's not just doing it for a day, a week, or a month, but it's doing them all the time and doing them under whatever circumstances may come because change is going to happen. We're going to see changes happen in the economy. We're going to see changes happen um, with the, the insurance companies we work with, the new carriers, new software, new this, that, and the other. That's going to happen, but the principles are consistent. So I wanted to start off with you, Mr. Miner. Um, you know, you have been someone, and, and you can kind of let people know how, what you were doing before, how long you've been here at Symmetry, but one thing that I've seen from you during your entire period of time here is just that you know how to connect with people, you know, and, and when we go to that first core value of Symmetry, relationships matter, uh, people come first, you know how to connect, and you were connecting with people when you were in the field driving all over southern Utah, writing business on a, on a very regular and consistent basis, and then getting to this point now where um, when we're using Switchboard and the virtual platform, you, you haven't seen a dip. Like you, you still find a way to connect with people uh, regardless of the medium. So introduce yourself and then just share with them what is the principle? What is the principle that they can take away from the call today that will allow them to, no matter how they're trying to connect with their clients, they can go out uh, and be able to do that. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Edward. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to come on and share today. <clears throat> My name is Ryan Miner. I'm direct to the newest 120, grr, 130 tomorrow, Griff Martin. Uh, I'm grateful to be so. Uh, he's been an awesome mentor the whole time I've been here. And uh, I was in the pawn business before you guys. I overzealously thought that I could change the uh, the the bad stigma of uh, what everybody everybody thinks about pawn businesses. I've always been customer service oriented. Um, I was able to change it in my own little sphere and maybe in my own little mind, right? But um, I left that business, never thought I'd be in this business uh, until Griff approached me uh, 2016, end of December, about this time. I've been here about six years now, uh, which is really, really hard to believe. Um, but that's, uh, that's a little bit about me. Um, I wanted to relate just really quickly. I know we're kind of pressed on time, but I think a story that's very, very relevant. Um, I've told this story many times uh, on a very smaller scale, and I knew that I would be able to uh, get the opportunity to throw Griff under the bus on this one. I'm sure he'll be grateful for me to tell, <laughs> tell the story. Um, uh, anyway, I, I was here two weeks. Um, I was I was afraid of this, by the way. Yeah, this is this is this is an example of bad mentorship. So go ahead. It, it ends up being good. I, I promise you. So I was here two weeks. Uh, two weeks. I'd I'd booked seven appointments all in one day, which is 
a huge deal for anybody that's been here for any amount of time. It's, it's a, that's a, it was a great accomplishment for me. Um, Griff had me drive an hour and a half away from my house. I had no, I had not two nickels to rub together. I think I had to sell something to put gas in my van to, uh, to, to drive to, to these appointments. And I was out all day, sat with five of those, which is still pretty dang good, right? Um, I came up at the end of the day with a big goose egg, nothing. I sold nothing, you guys. Um, sitting in a gas station parking lot and head on the steering wheel, all I could do to, to bear having to go tell my poor wife that I came up empty handed again. Um, I called Griff, it was nine o'clock at night. His 11 o'clock to his credit, he answered the phone, right? Um, he, the first thing he told me after I, I told him about my day is, this is a quote, and he, he can verify this. He's, he's like, Ryan, I'm glad that happened to you, buddy. And, and I, it was all I could do to not reach through that phone and grab him by the neck and pull him through the phone. But in retrospect, uh, the next day, we're able to go through every single one of those appointments. And his advice to me, you guys, was, Ryan, you you will not get anywhere in this business until you put that client first. And, and that was impactful for me. Um, I, I came from a business that that was, I've been in sales positions almost my whole professional career. And that really wasn't how, how we were taught, P putting the client's needs and needs in front of our own. And so I had to learn that. And that principle right there has never changed. We have had countless changes in technology and the way that we that we approach business but our core values have stayed the same our approach to the client has never changed i will say you guys that that to the client nothing has changed mm -hmm. absolutely nothing has changed they don't even even after covid they don't know that we were meeting with with, with people kneecap to kneecap they all they all they are concerned about is being able to connect with somebody, trust them enough to give you personal information and to get coverage put into place for themselves. That has never changed. I had a hard time, I had a hard time with that. I, I love sitting with people. I love that connection. I love being able to connect with them on that level. And um, I, I, I fought the COVID, I fought the, the, the uh, virtual thing for a long time until I realized that I could connect with them just the same. I could, I could gain their trust just the same. And as soon as I, that principle rang true to me, then I left that behind. I've been able to transition over to virtual. Now I do almost 100% over the phone. I can't remember the last time I sat on a Zoom appointment, to be honest with you. And I'm able to connect with them. By the end of the, by the, end of the call, you guys, I get the same response from them. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful to you, Ryan. Thank you for being persistent. Thank you for helping our family with this. That has not changed. Um, and so that's really what I wanted to express to, to, to everybody is, is for me, for me, that is, that is that principle that has been constant. And it won't change no matter how much technology is put into place, no matter how much. I mean, I'm grateful for all this stuff because it makes our job easier, but that connection is, is, is never going to change and how we connect with the client will never change. So yeah. I hope that helps. No, definitely. And, and what I hope people really get from this, and I know you'll get this from each of these individuals as we go through this this afternoon, is that it, it's simple, guys. Like we, we don't have to overcomplicate it. People may be saying, well, I already knew that. Okay, but are you acting on that? Are you doing that on a regular basis? Are you really putting, like, are you thinking with, am I trying to get a commission to pay this bill, that bill, or the other? Um, I, you know, I, I, I love it when I hear agents talk about when we were going into the home, right? It's like, you know, when I'm at the, the doorstep and I wipe my feet to go in, like I leave myself out. And then when I'm in that home or in that meeting or on that phone call, I'm all about them. It has nothing to do with the commission. It has nothing to do with the carrier trip I'm trying to, it's all about them. And like, that's a fundamental thing and a fundamental principle that if, you're not doing it. Like you have to check yourself on that because a, a lot of times, and it's like uh, what, what Todd and, and Resmin were talking about earlier. Like we have this big contest that you're pushing for. We might try to bend the rules to try to win a contest, right? Not put a client first to get them into this product or that product because it's going to help me win a contest. But again, that's where I'm violating that principle. Um, and it's something that I've just continued to see you do so well um, over the years. And, and you had those moments, like you said, like I, I can't connect like I, I can 
in the home virtually, but it's just to dispel a limiting belief and you adopted that empowering belief and you've you step into this so fully and continue to do what has always worked in the current circumstance, the current environment that we're in. So thank you for sharing that. Um, let's go to the building aspect, right? So if production uh, is the one box, building is the other, this is one of those areas where people have said, oh, things are changing, right? Uh, Zip recruiter is not what it used to be. I can't get on Indeed anymore. I can't, you know, does career builders still do resumes? Like, <laughs> like all that stuff like, is, is going to happen, but how do we connect with people to share a vision and allow them to take a part of that vision and overlay it on what they want, their goals and what they want to do. Um, and that's what I've seen you, uh, Mr. Federico, do so well. Um, I think here in the past three months, um, uh, you, people may be seeing some of the, the direct agency numbers that we've been able to put up as far as, as contracts and recruits. And I would have to say that around 70% of all of our direct agency recruits are coming out of the Federico uh, organization right now. Uh, because again, in, when you first got started here, you recruited like gangbusters. Uh, you know, we all went through the changes of COVID, this, that, and the other together. Um, and there was that little, okay, we have to just reconfigure how we're thinking about what we did before to now. And now that you've, similar to what Ryan Miner was just talking about, you were able to make that reconnect what you already, already knew and just start doing it. And we're, we're seeing the results now. So introduce yourself and share a little bit about what's that principle when it comes to building that people have to hold on to that if you do this, they will come. Like <laughs> that, that old, old, right? If you build it, they will Agency come. Agency of dreams. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, my name is Ryan Federico. I am direct to Eric and Julie Prabula here in Southern California. Uh, started with Symmetry, wrote my first application in July of 2018 and uh, in the fabulous Martin Master Agency, Griff Martin and uh, Edward Pritchett hierarchy. So just um, I think that to in, in the, I guess, concept of conserving time here and just boiling it down to what really matters the most. I don't know that uh, recruiting is any different than the mindset of producing. And I remember that I was, um, I wanted to build an agency and I, of course, wanted to grow a business and I wanted to grow passive income. And really at the core of that is that I, I wanted to have my day-to-day -day existence be about helping people and helping free people in the way that I was freed by coming to Symmetry and give people the relationships with their spouses and their children the way that I got my relationship with my spouse and my children when I came to, to symmetry, which I didn't have before in my in my last career. And so it, it was always with that intention of I want to help people and I want to make my daily existence about helping people on the most massive scale that I can. And I remember one time specifically, uh, because you're right, man, we came out, we started just building like crazy and we started recruiting a bunch of people and we grew to like insta, insta instant rice success, right? <laughs> like Uncle Ben's just like, boom, right, right, uh, right in the pot. And uh, then, you know, some stuff happened and some people left and some people went through some hard times and a uh, recruiting platform changed. And I remember talking to you specifically, like I, I reached out to, to Edward and I was just like, man, it, it feels like I'm playing whack-a-mole. It feels like, you know, all right, Craigslist was working and then it stopped and then like ZipRecruiter was working and then it stopped and then Indeed was working and then it stopped and then this was working and it stopped. And I remember specifically you telling me, well, Ryan, this entire industry is whack-a-mole. Right, like there isn't anything about what we do that isn't whack-a-mole. And that's where like this first principle that I wanna talk about is number one, I think it's you showing up first and foremost, you continually showing up and you putting in the effort and energy, it being in your calendar, it being a habit of something that you do on a regular basis is you help you find people to join this business, right? But then being flexible. I think that's really the key is like staying as flexible as possible and not being too attached to one particular recruiting source, not being too attached to one particular type of person. Uh, the most longest, the longest standing agent in uh, my organization outside of Keith Fonseca, who's the first person that, uh, that I recruited warm market. The longest standing agent is a woman named Morgan Hangston, who I love to death. She's here in Southern California with me. Uh, and her deal was she just wanted to homeschool her kids. She, she had uh, three children. She just wanted to homeschool the kids and uh, she wanted to make a couple extra thousand dollars a month. 
And that was it. She didn't want the same things that I wanted. She didn't have my goals of like wanting to make, you know, six, seven, eight figures, right? She just wanted to have enough money to cruise along, do some extra stuff with her family and, and find a, a very comfortable place with a family and a community that she could do that. And she's found that and she's done it very consistently. Every single month I can count on Morgan Hankston throwing up $3,000 to $4,000 of premium, making the money that she wants to make, right? H having the relationships with her family that she wants to have. And that is the goal of symmetry is, is for you to find that time and money balance, whatever that looks like for you. It doesn't need to be what it looks like for me. So I think being flexible with who I'm looking for, what type of person I'm looking for, uh, what, and also where I'm looking for them and showing up consistently, I think is the first thing. That leads into the second part of the principle I don't think that's ever changed and ever will change is that for me, I gotta, I have to approach this as it's not about me. The same way as Ryan was talking about when I go into that home or I go online or I talk to somebody on the phone or I'm texting them via switchboard, whatever it is, it's not about me and my, my money, my income. It's about helping that person get coverage and protecting that family. And so if I approach recruiting in the same way, yes, I want passive income. Yes, I want to have, you know, an agency. But if I make it about the person that I'm talking to, what are their dreams? And do I believe that we can help them hit those dreams, right? Do I believe that we have a system? Can I be a small part of helping them hit their dreams? And that's that, that um, age old adage of if you help enough, help enough people get what they want, you're always gonna get what you want. And that's what I think we've always approached building by is like, can we help this person? What are their dreams? What do they want, right? And I think the third principle outside of that is, um, I remember Brian Delaney when I first got started building, um, you know, shout out to, to Brian Delaney. I, I listened to, you know, one of his, uh, I, I think it was at conference, it was probably a breakout session at conference, and he talked about the reasons why people will leave your organization, right? And so he said that, that there's two reasons, only, only two reasons why good people will leave your organization, why good people will leave Symmetry. The number, those two reasons are, unclear processes and unmet expectations. So I just need to make sure there are a million reasons. There are countless reasons why the wrong people will leave your organization. There's so many reasons why the wrong people will leave your organization that we don't really even need to think about it. But I just need to make sure that I have very clear processes. Like, do I know Summit? Do I know what they're being told in Summit or are they getting told something in Summit and then I'm telling them something different as soon as I talk to them on the phone and they're confused? And it's an unclear process, right? Do I have a whole nother sales presentation that I'm giving to them, right? Am I, am I confusing them? Am I the problem? Because I don't even know what they're seeing, right? Do I know that there's mentorship checkpoints? Do I know that there's an income calculator? Do I know what, uh, what's being suggested that they do, right? How, how well do I know what they're about to see so that I can make sure that the processes are ultra clear, right? Number one. And then I think number two, unmet expectations, right? Am, am I putting myself in a position where I'm not able to meet the expectation that, that they have of me? Or am I setting them up for failure because I'm not telling them the expectations that I have of them and what they're gonna do and how they're gonna contact me and how, what I'm here for, what I'm not here for. What's the difference between a mentor and a manager? right? Like, and, and how to come to me as a mentor and what times I'm available and what's in my life, my family, uh, when, when they can expect to hear back from me, what's the fastest way to get a hold of me, you know, all those things of like, what are your expectations of this? What are my expectations of you? And that's been, that's rang true. Every time that I've had very clear processes with people and very clear expectations with people, they always win. And mm -hmm. if you look over the last 60 days, you're right. Like the last 60 days, we've, uh, we've got 80 licensed agents that have joined um, the master agency just between me and, and the, the Fonseca base shop. 37 were in my base, 43 are in Keith's base, uh, 28 new writers over the last 60 days, um, and an 89% net placed, which is, um, you know, that means that the people are coming in, not only are writing business, but they're profitable, right? And so we, we have you know, a, a decent number of people that are able to follow these processes and find, you know, success and, and whatever their dreams are, whatever their goals are and, and make it not about us. So hopefully that helps in, in some of the things that we focus on on a regular basis to uh, no matter what's happening, no matter where we're getting people from, uh, we're doing the same things over and over again. Yeah. And, and what you said there, that, that third one there just around, process and knowing what that process is and what the expectations are 
symmetry continues to clarify that process. We've always had a process and it just continues to get clarified and better and better. And we as builders have to stay engaged and plugged in so that we understand it so that we can better communicate that uh, as we build. And then uh, again, going back to on the production side, like the stuff that we do on the production side is the same stuff that we do on the building side. If I don't know what they want, if I'm not thinking about them and not me, how can I ever help them get that? Um, and why would they be inspired to do that? They're not coming here to work for me. They're coming here to work for themselves, for their kids, for their spouse. That's what they're here for. And it's one of those things you, you said as we go over to Mr. Martin here, it's about getting what you want. Um, and Griff, I, I know uh, me, me and you get to commiserate these days when you, when you have a, a lot of the young ones around the house. Uh, they bring back all sorts of fun little bugs to, to pass around. So I know you're not feeling 100% today, uh, but definitely yeah. glad you're, you're, you're able to be on. Um, you know, for you, as, as we wrap up today, you've uh, been with Symmetry for now right at a decade. Um, you've been in different stages of your life during those 10 years. Uh, you know, I, I remember when you were, you know, the, the single musician that was just sat out there just hanging out, doing, doing what you needed to do there and, uh, and seeing the transition when you were, were doing a lot of traveling. I mean, uh, flying over to Australia to play at the Australian Grammys, uh, doing shows all across the Southeast. Um, and then I see you uh, get married, first kid, you know, Hudson comes along, uh, second one was cut and, and, you know, some things switched, like along the way, things switched for you personally, like what you wanted. Um, and you were able to use the principles that always got you what you wanted here at Symmetry to make the transitions that you needed to get to that next level, that next place for you and your business. So, you know, I just wanted to turn it over here to you uh, to, to close us out and just share with everyone, you know, based off what two of your own uh, people have just talked about um, here in, in Mr. Minor and Mr. Federico with the principles that they're using that you've helped to teach to them. Uh, what are some that you would share with Symmetry Nation where they can get the things that you've gotten over the last 10 years, which is getting what you want out of this business by using those core principles? And I mean, you've made it look pretty straightforward and easy. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to call it too easy. Like you, you, you work through things, but like you definitely made it look simple to get the things that you wanted from this business um, in this 10 years that we've had an opportunity to work together. So I'll, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. And uh, I know we don't have a whole lot of time. And I'll be honest with you, even if I just had a few minutes uh, just to express my gratitude for uh, for this company, for for Brandon and Brian and Casey for going out out of their out of their norm and starting a new business and, uh, and, and exploring a new opportunity because they knew that they could help people be more profitable. Um, then that would be enough as well as to you. You know, I'm a full believer. By the way, my name is Griff Martin. I'm direct to uh, the, the company as well as you, Mr. Edward Pritchett. And, uh, you know, I got to say, like, I'm, I'm a full believer that we only get a few a few really good opportunities in this world, right? Like in our lifetime. And uh, I'm going to take that a little bit further. We only get, maybe we get, right? One good men mentor or men like a, the chance to be a mentee to a good mentor, to somebody who, who has your, who trusts you, somebody who has your, who, uh, who's got your back, who will be there for you um, through the hard times or the good times through 10 years of just beating themselves up, right? Whatever the case may be. And that that's who you've been for me, man. And I, I can't really, I can't express my gratitude enough to you for everything you've done to me and for my family. I mean, at this point, I have left a legacy. If I, if I, if I wasn't here tomorrow, my family would be taken care of, you know, and that's, I never thought I'd have the chance to, to say that, right? And that's, because, uh, you know, I, I didn't have that for myself. So, um, you know, I have been here for about 10 years. I will say, don't, don't quit. Like, I don't care where you see yourself right now. Like, don't give up. And I, I was actually talking to Federico about this uh, just, you know, I don't remember, it was a few months back. And we, he, he said something and I, I like, I really resonated with me. He was like, I feel like I was just meant for something great, right? I feel like I'm supposed to be successful. Like, I'm going to succeed here. In the back of my mind, after, after being on these national calls, I don't even know how many of these national calls I've been on. I can count them probably, but I've only missed like a few in like 10 years, right? I could count them on like one, maybe two hands of these national calls that I've missed. And I keep showing up to these and they keep pouring into me and they keep re-innovating. They keep telling, helping us get better and do better. And it's just like, it's just fuel. So I just know in my heart, it's always going to, I'm going to be successful here, no matter what. I don't care how long it takes me. 
I'm going to be successful here. And I'll tell you one, one pitfall that I ran into for a long time was I, I was looking in the past too much. Can't remember who said it on the builder's call, but it was right on point. I was looking in the past too much and I was comparing myself on what I, what I've been doing, you know, the last month, the last year, and I was pulling me down versus really focusing on where I'm going. And uh, I started doing that a lot more. Now, when you have kids, it changes things, right? You start really thinking, okay, it's not about me anymore. Like it was about me when I first got started here, right? I was playing music. I was living, I was living a great life out just producing. Like ultimately what I wanted here was to go out and make a six figure income on a part-time basis and do whatever I want <laughs> outside of that time, like travel, play music, you know, travel the world, you know, go to, go to stay up late if I want to sleep in, go camp and backpack and do whatever I want to do. And that's what I did for a long time. And I had a few agents on my team. Um, but then I, a couple things happened. Number one, I had people watching me, right? They were looking at me. They were, okay, well, is this person going to start building or what? And, and I felt that from the team, right? I mean, they, they you know, you can't, you can build a wave here, it, it, but you, you got to continue to build the wave. The, you know, it will crash, right? It can't crash. So you have to continue to feed this business with the right things, with high dollar activities, which is writing business. Right, going out helping families, which is going out and, and building and finding new people in this industry. And these two guys right here have done such a great job of that, uh, of both of those facts. And they're both incredible producers. And I will say, Mr. Miner, that was six years ago that I made that comment. So that's a long time. I thought it was only like four years ago. It was six years ago that I made that comment. It's not. I probably would have not done it now. But knowing that we'd be talking about it on this call six years later, I'm kind of glad I said it in the time. <laughs> um, so, you know, when I think about some of the things that have changed in like the concept of a principle, like what is it, right? I looked it up, I nerded it out, looked it up in the dictionary, and it says a basic idea of rule that explains or controls how something happens or works, right? That's in the Cambridge Dictionary. And so what are those things that really haven't changed? And uh, when I look at Brian and Casey and Brian and Brandon and, and yourself um, and the innovation that is coming out of this company, some of the things really have not changed. Five apps for 5,000, right? I mean, those, those, those big things. But number one, we help families, right? And we offer a, we offer a, higher, um, a higher caliber of experience for that client, right? I heard Brandon Ellison say one time, let's change people's experience buying insurance, right? Because people, we have a little bit of a bad reputation in the insurance business, but we can change that. We can give people a higher caliber, a, a, a better experience in their buying process for an insurance product, right? Um, we do good in the world. They've been doing good in the world for, ever since I started this company, right? Doing good for us, right? Doing good for charities. I mean, we've all been, we've all seen what we've done for Make-A-Wish Foundation. Like it's so important to them, right? That they, they, they do this and it makes me do the same thing, but that's been the same since, since we first started here. We help people make a living in this industry, in this, in this industry, right? People come in here because they wanna make a living here. They wanna make a living in this insurance business. We are conduits to a system that works extremely well. It is our job to learn that, there and learn that system and leverage that system as much as we can. So if you're going to hire somebody, you need to know how to do it this imagery way, right? Trying to reinvent the wheel and this kind of stuff, this, it, can, it can hold you back. Um, we help people make a, um, we, we promote and believe in a proven system that is designed for success. You know, the system is constantly innovating and getting better. I will say one thing about Miner, you, you've done a great job of being able, and both these guys really, switching over to, you know, the switchboard, some of the tools that we have, they're writing the same amount of personal production, but they're doing it in a very a much shorter time frame, right? They're doing it a lot less, you know, they've consolidated, they've condensed that. That's what a tool is supposed to do. It's supposed to make you more effective. It's made them more effective. So they make they write the same amount of premium they might have two years ago, but they're doing it in half the time, right? So that allows them to, to build recruiting systems like they have and bring on so many new people. So they're using those tools in the right way. And, and the last piece is we work on ourselves. It's really the four cornerstones, right? It's really what it comes down to. They have not changed. It's like our our core values were written a long time ago. They just weren't written down, right? It was apparently it was really easy to write our core values. Thanks to the, Doug Zay, I know had a huge part of that, was able to write them pretty easily. Like they were already in place. And so it wasn't like, oh, and how we, what's our culture gonna be like? What are we gonna really promote? What are we gonna, what do we really care about? No, they they knew they knew that going into this business and starting this industry. So those are some of the things on my mind, man. I just, I'm, I'm just so happy to be, you know, down the road, what, what I have now, what I can offer my family. I mean, it's insane. And, and, and what's cool is like, there's not just, I know we have like what, 45, 120s. There's no limit, right? Everybody can be a 120. If you truly want to be a 120, you can get there. It might take you 10 years. It might take you two years. Like it did Jamie Susie. I still have no idea how she did that. And some other people who have gotten there in two years, but, you know, I just wasn't, and I, I can humble myself and say that my first few years of being here, 
I wasn't good enough for that top contract, right? I had to get better. I had to get better. I had to continue to work on myself. I had to have life experiences. I had to move down this life path we have a little bit further before I was truly ready for it. And I believe things like agency owner and hitting the top contract, those things come in the right time when you're ready for them. And you've said that to me uh, a number of times and I, and I truly believe it. So thank you, man, for everything you've done for me. I'm just, sure. I'm just very thankful. And I can't wait to see what we can actually do here. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know the, the, the future that we all have uh, with everything that's on place, if we really hone in and focus on these principles, the principles that I've seen you do, where, again, you've been able to get the things that you wanted in the seasons that you were in. Um, and I, you, you're right in that sense that, like, part of being ready for the, that next level or this contract or, or, or whatever, this leadership position, it's about are you in the right season of your life and have you done the things necessary to bring that about? And so you've been able to start to align those uh, so well, and, and it's why – you did what you did here over the, the past three months, you and your entire team. Um, and if what these gentlemen were sharing with you all, I, I know some people are like, well, that was simple stuff. I, I could have read that in the in, in HQ and you know, I, I already knew that. Okay, if you already knew it, then do it. Like that's that's all I ask of, of everyone that's on this call. Like the reason that people are not having the success that they would like to have for whatever season that they're in it's because there are these principles that these gentlemen just shared with you that you're not doing at your best level. And if you can go out and start working to do these principles, the core principles, just go and read those eight core values that we have and tease out the principles that are in the talk with your mentor about, hey, what principles don't you see me doing 100% of the time? Mm -hmm. And listen, and don't get upset with them when they tell you something that doesn't make you feel good, right? Because they're telling you these things to allow you to be able to grow. And if we can all grow into these principles, Todd, man, like we, we think that we're growing fast right now. If everyone were doing these principles at 100% capacity, it, 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 it'd be crazy what we would start to do. But we're seeing it happen already. We're seeing people do it quicker and faster, adopting these principles on a more holistic basis, and it just spreading throughout the organization. So excited for the Martin organization, uh, what they're doing, uh, where Griff is leading that team. Um, and the leadership there, excited for where we are with symmetry powered by Quility um, and what's coming next. And Todd, let the uh, the founders know we just appreciate the opportunity to share uh, and pour into symmetry, symmetry Nation here this afternoon. So back to you, sir. And all, all I can think of, Richard, is there is talking the talk, which you just heard on this national call performed an extremely high level. And the advice and the wisdom poured in by Ryan squared was just spot on. Um, but, but guys, truly above talking the talk, it's walking the walk. And that's what the entire Pritchett organization does. And it starts right at the top with you, sir, Edward. We appreciate the many years on the advisory board, all that you continue to pour in this organization and continue to light that path for futures. But for me, I wanna say huge congratulations to my buddy, Griff Martin. I mean, so many people cheering for this and cheering for this moment and for him to push that ball over the finish line. I got to have many, many a conversations along that journey. And I would say to anybody in this organization, just um, how well you're thought of, how every unique individual brings their own dynamic that Griff is so appreciative of. The way Griff calls me and continues to fight for every single individual that's on his team and looks out for their best good. He truly is a servant leader. And uh, uh, Griff, you've been a tremendous friend to me and my family since I moved to Asheville. And this is a really big deal, buddy. And uh, I'm just so proud and honored to know that you're amongst the, the 43 directs we have now, right? That's going to stay tuned to next right. week's. Next week's and promotions I'll, when you no longer will be the latest and the greatest, buddy. <laughs> and we got to give a shout out to Mr. Mr. Pritchard for hitting that top level of leadership. It feels good to get him up there, right? Managing partner. I will definitely say to you, Edward, you probably heard that a hundred times, but um, it meant something to Griff. Griff and I talked about that a lot and him and his entire team wanting to see you at that, uh, at that level and hitting the top level of leadership within the organization. So the heart, the love, everything's felt throughout, guys. So 
Appreciation to everybody. From marketing, guys, one last update. We talked a lot about contract increases. The carriers, the products that are going to be affected will be in HQ today. The marketing team is already on the way and updating all the assets that we understand are going to need change because we are no longer a 70 to 120 company. We are an 80 to 130. So all assets are being worked on. Please bear with us. As you can imagine, we have a lot of video content. It's a lot of people we got to get back in to refilm and reshoot. And trying to hold down Casey's like trying to hold a rabid squirrel. So as fast as we can get Casey to do some reshoots and get all of the content that you guys know and use in the promotion of your agency, we're on it. We'll get to it. We've got a, 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 a very, very thorough checklist of all the things that need to be updated to make sure. But uh, we did not want to delay the, uh, the, the contract increases um, just until we had all those marketing assets uh, cleaned up. So we're working on it. We'll be there, guys. To everybody that joined in today, to everybody new, we're so glad that you joined. And everybody, please go out there. And if you do one thing this week, impact somebody else in a positive manner and call it a win. See everybody real soon. Appreciate you all. Thank you.